Today, I'm going to share with you my experiences of converting my conventional lawn into a native meadow that promotes wildlife. We're going to go from this lawn to this beautiful 100% native meadow that has a combination of host plants, nectar plants, and filler grasses that support butterflies, bees, birds, and other pollinators. Let's get into it. All right, look at how good this hoe works. All right, so I'm gonna put you down right here. You might see my feet, but literally, I'm just taking out all this invasive stuff with this hoe. This hoe right here is working real good. You can just use this hoe up. If you just follow the root ball, show you how much this hoe is done. Works pretty well, actually. And uh, so this section I actually hand dug all this out which is, was a lot of work all right so as you can see the meadow is becoming more and more of a meadow i added some more purple thistle i'm adding more rayless sunflower i just got some little blue stem there's another one right there another one over there as well as some purple love grass so this is all going to be filled in with nice grasses and wildflowers to make this meadow quite full The only thing that I'm probably going to change is the placement of these thistles. I might actually move them more in the center area. There are some things in there that are going to be um, center pieces like the liatris and look at the beauty of that. And then there's another one getting big right there. There's one over there and then there's one finally shooting up right there. So that's going to be my centerpiece is the liatris aspera. And then I'm going to try to fit some more plants. I do really love these. This is Carcathiferous corumbosa. I don't know if I said that correctly, but it has really beautiful flowers. Apparently, it is going to be, um, they're not having decided just yet, but they might actually put this in the Liatris family. This is all bent because of where I had it planted previously. It was kind of sloped and then I transplanted it. So um, its flowers are going to be the wrong way, hopefully. Um, it starts reaching for the sun and straightens up. That's the goal. But if it blooms like that, then I try. But I'm planting two more right here. So next year, I'll have a huge patch of three right there. I'll have a patch of three right there. So I'll have a total of six. Hopefully, they all bloom next year at the same time. I'll have seeds. And same thing with some of the other plants. So my goal is to just basically create some seed banks. So that way, I'll have more plants. I am still doing work on my meadow. And right here I have three liatrises, also known as blazing star. So I have three different species. Right here is liatris spicata, which is known as spiked blazing star. This one right here, which is finally in bloom, is actually rough blazing star. And then I also have one down here that's planted scrub blazing star. But the reason why these plants are amazing is because they're fall nectar sources for many different pollinators like butterflies, bees, wasps, and their nectar load is very, very high because they have multiple little flowers coming down the stalk and it starts all the way up and works its way all the way down. And because of how long this flower stalk is, that's going to give a great amount of resources for pollinators. All right, so one thing about my meadow is that I'm just, you know, sprucing it up, putting some pine straw down all around it. I'm really liking how everything is starting to look. I will be clumping these three liatris spicatas in a grouping, probably where the aspera didn't do so well. It is outside of its natural range. However, you can see that this one is doing really, really well. And that was from a four inch pot. So today I am just going to be cleaning up the space. The main thing that I'm surprised about is this rayless sunflower doing so well in the hurricane. I just love the contrast of the rayless sunflower with the purple love grass. It's just so immaculate. You get the darks, you get the lights from the seed heads, and it's just finally starting to come together. Today, I'm going to just kind of clean it up. I'm going to add the um, spiked blazing star into the mix. So that way I have my nice purple pollinator plants in this array.
And so this region has a nice mixture of host plants and nectar plants, um, especially the Biden's alba. That's probably one of the top third nectar sources in Florida. Uh, we also have this Bahama Cassia for the sulfurs. We have plenty of uh, milkweed for the monarchs. We have pink swamp. We have Matea pubiflora. It's not looking too shabby. It was looking like this, like this beautiful new growth, but I transplanted it. So it kind of went through some shock. It's kind of coming back. Oh my God, this literally did not have so many leaves, but this right here is um, Asclepius tuberosa. I actually transplanted these from an area that they didn't like too much and they're really liking it here. So I'm glad the Asclepius tuberosa is popping back even though fall is coming. And then you can see all the seed heads on the purple love grass, so beautiful. Um, so I'm kind of using the purple love grass as like a nice filler spiller plant. And then the rest of the plants are kind of just shooting up, popping out. Um, in the back, because not all of my Latras Aspera was doing so well, I bought uh, three Latras Spicatas, which do really well and tend to reseed. This native meadow would not have happened if it wasn't for Biden's Alba, and I'll explain exactly why. So, I used to have this as a ginormous patch of Biden's Alba because I knew that it was a Florida native. There is a little bit of debate about that. Anyways, but Biden's Alba typically will actually choke out a lot of non-native plants. And it's a good nectar source for many different pollinators. It blooms year-round, and you can't really hate it too much other than the seeds getting on you. So, because I know that it chokes out a lot of invasive plants and it helps you know make it a lot easier to remove it because biden's alba is super easy to remove you can just literally have a, a set of gloves on and just remove biden's alba so what i did was is i had all of this as biden's alba but slowly but surely you can see right there that's how that this used to look like this all over here but slowly but surely i've been ripping up the biden's alba and putting in my native meadow and if it wasn't for Biden's Alba, I wouldn't have such an easy job of creating my native meadow. I swear my yard is so beautiful during sunset. Like, boy, do you see that? Do you see that shine? 